Welcome to module four, oxygenation and ventilation of the COVID-19 patient. It's important to note that products are shown for demonstration purposes only. The American Heart Association does not endorse or recommend any specific manufacturer or product. Patients with COVID-19 can present with viral interstitial pneumonia, severe hypoxemic respiratory failure, and ARDS. These patients often need intubation. The decision to intubate should consider the acronym GAP, which stands for gas exchange abnormalities, airway protection, and pulmonary toilet. The gas exchange abnormality of COVID-19 respiratory failure is primarily hypoxemia, P to F ratios, the inability to maintain adequate oxygenation, with invasive ventilation or high flow nasal cannula, hypercapnia with a pH less than 7.3, and increased work of breathing suggest abnormal gas exchange abnormalities. Patients may present with mental status changes and neurological dysfunction and require intubation for airway protection. COVID-19 patients may also have copious secretions and an endotracheal tube may facilitate adequate pulmonary toilet. The overall goal of mechanical ventilation in COVID-19 patients is to ensure lung protective ventilation by limiting over distension of the alveoli and ensuring adequate oxygenation and ventilation. Excessive tidal volumes can cause alveolar over distension, which can cause inflammation, organ dysfunction, increase venous return, and worsen ARDS. Although many ventilator settings may be used to manage patients with COVID-19 respiratory failure, consider initiating a cyst control volume control ventilation with an initial tidal volume of six milliliters per kilogram. It's important to note that your patient's weight should be calculated as their predicted body weight. A reasonable initial PEEP setting is 10 centimeters of water to recruit alveoli. In the setting of higher levels of PEEP, the clinician should carefully monitor the patient's hemodynamics, which may be compromised with decreased venous return. Set your patient's respiratory rate to 20 to 25 breaths per minute and consider their pre-intubation respiratory rate to guide you. Reasonable oxygenation goals in the COVID-19 patient with respiratory failure include a PaO2 greater than 16 and an oxygen saturation greater than 88%. Increasing inspired oxygen concentration levels and PEEP levels can improve oxygenation. This chart developed by the ARDS network can guide titration of these parameters. With lower tidal volumes, carbon dioxide levels will increase. Ventilation strategies for patients with ARDS should consider the concept of permissive hypercapnia to allow patients to have lower tidal volumes. A pH greater than 7.25 and a PaCO2 between 40 to 65 is reasonable. Alveolar distension can be measured by a plateau pressure. The plateau pressure reflects respiratory system compliance and should be targeted to less than 30 centimeters of water. In general, peak inspiratory pressures should be less than 35 centimeters of water. Patients who require mechanical ventilation will require analgesia and sedation. Analgesic agents such as fentanyl, hydromorphone, or morphine should be administered before sedatives unless the patient is paralyzed. Pain medications can be titrated to respiratory rate the Richmond Agitation Scale, or RAS, or pain score. Sedation with medications such as propofol, benzodiazepines, and dexmedetomidine should be added for agitation, anxiolysis, amnesia, and ventilator synchrony, and can be titrated to the Richmond Agitation Sedation Scale. All patients who receive a neuromuscular blocker must also receive either propofol or a benzodiazepine for amnesia. Note that dexmedetomidine does not have amnestic properties and should not be used as a sole sedative drug for patients who are paralyzed. 
Mechanical ventilation of the COVID-19 patient may be challenging. If peak airway pressures are greater than 35 centimeters of water, evaluate the need for suctioning. Check your patient's plateau pressure. Check the placement of the endotracheal tube and cuff pressure. And evaluate your patient for a pneumothorax by either a chest X-ray or ultrasound. If the plateau pressure, which requires an inspiratory hold maneuver, is greater than 30 centimeters of water, reduce the patient's tidal volume by one milliliter per kilo. Tidal volumes should rarely be less than four milliliters per kilo. In this scenario, consider diuresis and also consider paralysis. If the oxygen saturation is less than 88% on an FiO2 greater than 0.6, increase the patient's PEEP to the level indicated on the ARDS network chart. Monitor blood pressure with each increase in PEEP. Consider a change in position in your patient, such as proning, and consider diuresis if you're struggling with oxygen saturation. If the pH is less than 7.25, assess whether the acidosis is respiratory or metabolic. Adjust the respiratory rate higher, usually two to six breaths per minute, to lower the carbon dioxide levels. You really want to have a respiratory rate greater than 35 breaths per minute. If you go higher than a respiratory rate of 30, you will need to decrease the inspiratory time on the ventilator to 0.8 to avoid an in inspiratory-expiratory ratio. Increasing respiratory rates also requires monitoring your patient for the possibility of OP. Evaluate and treat metabolic abnormalities in your patient. You can do this by checking your patient's anion gap or lactate levels. If the pH in your patient is greater than 7.42, adjust the respiratory rate lower. This is usually a two to six breath per minute change. And doing this will increase your patient's carbon dioxide levels. In some patients, mechanical ventilation alone will not be enough to improve oxygenation, and patients may remain hypoxemic. In these patients, it is important to call for help early. Consider proning your patient to improve ventilation and perfusion mismatch. Assess your patient's cardiac function because myocarditis and cardiomyopathy have been reported. Consider nitric oxide, a pulmonary vasodilator, to improve EQ mismatch. Consider paralysis in your patient. Remember again, the patients must be sedated with the benzodiazepine or propofol. And finally, consider ECMO. Calling for help early is an important crisis resource management principle. Triggers for calling for help include an oxygen saturation less than 88% on an FiO2 of 1.0 for more than 15 minutes despite troubleshooting, a pH less than 7.25 for more than two blood gases, a pH less than 7.1 a PaO2 less than 40, a P to F ratio of less than 150 for two hours, a P to F ratio of less than 80, high priority red alarms that you cannot resolve within two minutes, and low priority yellow alarms that you cannot resolve within 15 minutes. <laughs>